All right, George, we will continue to lead the way, of course, on this story on air and online. Right now, you can go to WLWT.com and our WLWT mobile app to read the full arrest report and also get updates throughout the night. New details tonight about the police involved shooting in Springfield Township. We now have the police report explaining why officers say they shot a man who seemed calm on the 911 call just moments earlier. WLWT News 5 John London live for us with the new developments. John. Well, Mike, Springfield Township police say they thought they had 42 year old John McLaughlin calmed down enough that he was sitting with his head in his hands when he raised up with a handgun in the direction of two officers who fired seven shots. After a heated argument with his wife, Lisa, New Year's night, McLaughlin called 911 saying, I'm tossing her stuff out, I'm done. It's been months, it needs to end now. When officers pulled up, two women, the wife and a friend, were out front. The gunfire happened inside the home where officers Nick Hornback and Brandon Musgrove say they spoke with McLaughlin for about 20 minutes, but he became more distraught at one point, unexpectedly producing a handgun, was ordered repeatedly to drop it. Instead, he began to stand, bringing the gun in the direction of the officers who fired seven shots, striking him several times. Both of those officers are on paid administrative leave until the investigation is over. Eight years ago today, McLaughlin's first wife, Melissa, died of breast cancer. I spoke with her mother and her mother told us he was a wonderful husband to Melissa. We loved him. This is a hard time for all of us. Live in Springfield Township, John London, WWDT News 5. All right, John, thank you. An autopsy was completed today. The prosecutor will review the investigation once it's finished and determine if any criminal charges are warranted. New on WLWT tonight, racist vandalism spray painted at the Hebrew Union College. A swastika was found on the college's sign this morning. It has since been removed. Cincinnati police now going through surveillance footage, but it's not clear when exactly the vandalism happened. If you have any information, call police. Also developing this afternoon, a man clipped by a car while changing a tire on I-71 North right near the Ridge Road exit. The driver just took off. A friend of the victim caught up with the driver who took off. That driver was cited. Now the victim has a minor leg and hip injury and is expected to be fine. Another candidate is now joining the race for Cincinnati's mayor in just about a half an hour from now. Rob Richardson is going to be making that announcement. He was named to UC's Board of Trustees back in 2007, and then last year he was elected board chair. Away from the university, the Winton Woods graduate does marketing and legal work. Richardson's father, Rob Sr., is the president of the local chapter of the NAACP and was among those just last week calling for an investigation of Current Mayor John Cranley over the firing of the former police chief Jeffrey Blackwell. Now, in a preemptive political strike, Mayor Cranley held a news conference at the banks just this afternoon to show that he had the endorsements of major local labor unions, and among them, the nation's largest public employee union, the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, along with the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Unions really play a big role too in democratic politics and. Last summer, Cranley negotiated raises for several different unions. Today, Mayor Cranley also touted his successes so far as mayor. This city, under our leadership, has added 7,000 jobs. This city, under our leadership, has solved the pension crisis, $800 million pension unfunded liability when I took office. We got that result. This is, a, this is an administration that moved from a minority contracting from $4 million a year to roughly $45 million a year. We are building a better city. Okay, so right now it is a three-way race with Yvette Simpson also in the running. Only the top two vote-getters, though, will emerge from the spring primary and then face off this fall. Some regular WLWT viewers are unable to watch us right now. We're currently negotiating with DirecTV while those negotiations for fair terms continue. WLWT will not be seen on the satellite provider. You can, however, always receive our station for free over the air with an antenna. WLWT also available from your local cable provider and other satellite operators. And we stream our newscasts and our websites. Uh, we'll have that for you, WLWT.com and the WLWT mobile app. So we have a couple options for you. Well, a lot of people start the new year with lofty goals. 
like us, <laughs> eat right, exercise oh, more. I know, only to break them later. Yes. But this one, there is one habit at least that experts say should be easy for you to give up. Stop cleaning your ears. Why the wax is actually a good thing for your health. I think I can pull that off. <laughs> Plus, twin power activate. The toddler who saved his brother after that dresser tipped over on them. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. All right, parents, this is video that's going to make you gasp. Twin boys climbing on a dresser, and it tips over right on top of them. So, okay, but you could call this a toddler with superhuman strength here, or maybe even brotherly love. But two-year-old Bodie is being called a hero now for saving his twin brother, Brock. Their mom says that she and her husband were sleeping and didn't hear a thing because I usually hear everything. We didn't hear a cry, we didn't hear a big thud. So we just, we woke up, looked at the camera, we're like, what's going on? Are they still sleeping? And we saw that it was all the way down and they were just still playing. So we didn't know if it landed on them. Yeah, but as they reviewed the video monitor, they were horrified at what they saw. Look at this and immediately secured, of course, the boys dresser to the wall. Now they are sharing this video publicly to try and warn other parents to do the same thing. You applaud them for being so honest and open about this. Meanwhile, the viral video has gotten the attention of members of Congress. In fact, a Pennsylvania senator now says he's going to reintroduce legislation requiring a safety standard be set and enforced for furniture stability. Oh. Anderson Township considered one of the top places now to watch in the new year. Plenty of stores and businesses opening up and more on the way. This is fun stuff. WLWT News 5's Alexis Rogers was at the Anderson Town Center to check out all the new attractions. We've seen a total of between 40 and 50 new businesses pop up in Anderson Township. New businesses and new opportunities are springing up in Anderson Township. I got to believe it's going to be near a thousand jobs. Sights and sounds of construction are clear marks of the makeover. A long time ago, it didn't look like anything. Um, and then we used to have a, a called Beachmont Mall, it used to be a traditional mall. And then that concept kind of got tired and went away. It's just so good for everybody in Anderson. Property values can't be bad. Many things are coming soon here to Anderson Township, especially towards the end of 2017, but they're wasting no time. This movie theater will actually open this week. It's been over 40 years since we've had a movie theater in Anderson, so you know things are really happening when a movie theater is finally making its way here. Ovation Cinema Grill 9 will offer drinks and food service while you watch the movie, and it also includes the Big D experience with a movie screen more than 70 feet wide and three stories tall. Already open, Bar Louie and the Crunch Fitness Center. And Kroger is expanding, adding 50,000 square feet, making it the largest Kroger in the country. And coming to the corner of Beachmont Avenue and Wolf Angle Road, Corrito, the Eagle, and McAllister's Deli, all expected to open in the fall. We've got over $200 million of public and private development going on within a half a mile of where we're standing right now. Um, and that's kind of the... Uh, development of the downtown Anderson, which we've never really had before. It's fantastic. It's it's great. It's great. I work over here at Crunch and go to Bar Louie often. The movie theater is opening soon. It's it's fantastic. I live like two minutes away, so we we love it. We're excited. All these new places uh, need to have jobs, uh, and so we're excited that you know more people are going to consider working out here, maybe living out here. In Anderson Township, Alexis Rogers, WLWT News Five. And if you're wondering what that construction is going up on either side of the entrance from Beachmont, we are told that a Starbucks will be on one side and a K Jewelers on the other. Okay, so a warning tonight to stop cleaning your ears. Yeah, experts say that's not only dangerous, it's usually unnecessary. So most of us are maybe compelled to clean our ears as part of our usual bathing routine. Because let's face it, there's a lot of yuck factor to earwax, right? <laughs> is that a technical term? Anyway, earwax is not dirty. It's actually a healthy thing for you. It guards your inner ear against dirt and other small particles. Experts actually say that it's also, it has antibacterial properties and may help protect you against infections. And there's also the risk that you could, of course, rupture, or maybe penetrate your eardrum, which can cause problems with your hearing and even your balance. If your earwax builds up too much, see your doctor. Let me take a look. Cincinnati's certified most accurate forecast. 
We're starting with the city cam and a look downtown. We had the heaviest rain come through in the last about 45 minutes. Some intense rain briefly moving through downtown and central parts of the 275 loop. But since then, it's pushed off to the east. Skies brightening just a little bit, but we do have some more showers to roll through. Here's the WLWT radar. That heavier band that came through earlier is diminishing across northern Claremont and across Warren County. It did bring in some moderate rainfall intensity for Mason and up through Lebanon and continuing into Wilmington at this point. Notice the 275 loop. A couple of showers still out there, but we do not have anything heavy left to move in. So I do think the heaviest rain has already moved through for Hamilton County. Lighter showers off and on for the rest of our evening, though, will persist. The future cast painting on the picture here at 7 o'clock this evening with those showers still fairly numerous, moving from west to east across the region. As we have past 9 and 10 o'clock this evening, we should really start to see those showers let up. The cold front is moving through as we speak, and that'll allow a little bit drier air, a slight north wind to pick up, and things should start to quiet down. A stray overnight shower or two still a possibility. Temperatures will be falling back in the last couple of days. We've been keeping an eye on the overnight forecast for tonight into tomorrow morning with the potential for a couple of wet snowflakes as the moisture wraps up early for Wednesday. Computer models still hanging on to just a slight chance for a couple of wet flakes, mainly in our eastern counties early tomorrow, likely before 5 a.m. So I don't think it's a problem for your Wednesday morning commute, but a wet snowflake or two, a possibility on the radar. Rainfall totals today between about a half and three quarters quarters of an inch for most locations. Lunkin Airfield coming at the high spot 84 84 hundredths of an inch Hamilton 85 hundredths of an inch. So it was a good soaking rain from last night through this evening. Our city cam shot downtown now looking across northern Kentucky. Still some of that rain moving off to the east. We're at 55 degrees about the same temperature as 24 hours ago with that cloud cover and the rain that's been in place. Temperatures have been hard to budge, but now a front working through and falling temperatures are expected for the evening. Here's our satellite and radar. The wider view with the rain moving through the cold front is right along the rain shower activity this evening. It's going to push through for the overnight and behind it tomorrow. A northwest wind picks up temperature Temperatures much colder highs only in the low 30s, but wind chills in the 20s during the day Wednesday. It's our quiet day because our next system arrives then for Thursday. It's going to stretch right across the Midwest into the Ohio River Valley and bring us a chance for some snow showers for the entire region during the day on Thursday. So here's a close look at our future cast for Thursday's forecast. The morning commute before 7 at 8 a.m. still looks dry. This looks like a late morning to midday start with snow showers. Maybe some moderate intensity band setting up there for the midday. Lighter snow showers through the afternoon and a first look at snowfall totals in general because this has been very consistent on the models is that higher totals could slightly be to the south, maybe a little bit more than an inch, about an inch across the heart of the tri-state. Our northernmost counties less than an inch expected. 28 degrees for a low tonight. There's exiting showers for the overnight. A few wet snowflakes. Much colder tomorrow, low 30s for temperatures, but wind chills in the 20s. That chance for snow showers or the activity expected on Thursday during the day around an inch of accumulation. Much colder temperatures persisting through our weekend. Some single digit low temperatures, highs in the 20s. We'll come out of it by early next week. Mike and Cherie. Thank you. Eight degrees overnight. Does that mean I have to start your car? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no Le doubt about leaving it. after the late news. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, this is just a nightmare for people, unfortunately, trying to get home after the holidays and travelers found themselves stuck like sardines in airport terminals. That stinks to be like a sardine. The computer <laughs> outage that created this chaotic scene at airports across America. Plus rocket explosion. What caused SpaceX to go up in flames in September? The answers we're getting now just days before the next rocket launch. Boy, holiday headache here. A computer uh, outage creates major chaos overnight at airports all across the country. One of the busiest travel days of the year, a four hour computer outage. Yeah, that's poor timing in the United States. Uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection System uh, getting a lot of problems because of it. Thousands of travelers were left packed into those terminals waiting to get their passports processed. I got off the plane. I had no information whatsoever. I was just trying to get to, through customs, and it was just to see hundreds of people there. It's still going. This has to be at least 5,000 people in line right now. This is worse than a Disneyland line. And Atlanta is the nation's busiest airport. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection released a statement saying that the computers were not hacked, instead calling it a temporary outage with its processing systems. 
Why Customs did not have a backup system will be part now of the investigation. We now have new information on the explosion of a SpaceX rocket or SpaceX rocket at Cape Canaveral. This was last September, so the explosion happened during the pre-launch engine test, destroying a $200 million satellite and severely damaging the launch pad. One of the bottles of liquid helium, which are under extreme pressure, buckled during fueling, causing it to burst. This brings now into question the safety of astronauts who are scheduled to fly on SpaceX rockets. Procedures actually require astronauts to be on board during fueling. SpaceX plans to make its first launch since the explosion this coming Sunday down, uh, out in California. It could also launch a rocket from the Cape before the end of the month. A fiery crash on Southern California's 110 freeway, and it's all caught on camera. The dark colored SUV was stalled when a passing vehicle going about 65 miles an hour slammed right into the back of it. That crash caused the SUV to burst into flames. The unconscious driver pulled to safety and eventually taken to the hospital. It's unknown if alcohol or drugs played a role in that wreck. Eat. Pray and loving it? Well, a new McDonald's has opened near the Vatican, much to the disapproval of many cardinals. Still unclear what Pope Francis makes of the decision or whether he'll be popping in for a burger. But some of the clergy have been more than a little surprised that a Vatican-owned building has been rented to the U.S. fast food chain. So the McDonald's is within a uh, line of sight here of the window where Pope Francis appears for his Sunday devotion. Despite the controversy, though, several nuns have already been spotted going in and grabbing a burger. A high school football star has announced his college plans. This is exciting. The new uniform LaSalle Lancer, Gerald White, says he'll put on in the fall. Plus a father charged after his baby ended up in the hospital. How prosecutors say he admitted to hurting the little girl. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT. You're watching WLWT News 5, leading the way. Racist vandalism hits Hebrew Union College. A swastika was found spray painted on the college sign this morning. It has since been removed, and Cincinnati police are now investigating this as a hate crime. WLWT News 5's Emily Wood is live for us at the campus in Clifton with more. Emily. Cherie, the college says the swastika, swastika symbol is a painful and hateful image to see anywhere, but especially right here on the front sign as you enter the Hebrew Union College campus. You can see behind me, it has since been cleaned off. That happened around 1030 this morning. But we want to show you a picture from earlier this morning when this first took place. They say it was between 9 and 930 this morning. Someone driving by the college saw the swastika had been spray painted on the front sign. Once the school was notified, Cincinnati police were then called. A criminal damaging report has been filed with District 5 and classified as a hate crime. The college does have surveillance cameras on campus, but there are hours of tape to search through to see if the camera caught anyone committing this crime. The college says this is unusual for Cincinnati, and thankfully the 100 students who go here are currently on break. This is a very powerful symbol of hate, and to see that on a Jewish uh, institution, a Jewish school in this case, or anywhere for that matter, brings back all of those really hateful memories and, and difficult times. Again, the vandalism was noticed somewhere between 9 and 9.30 this morning, but it's still unclear if it took place really late last night or very early this morning. Cincinnati police are asking if anyone saw anything to call police with that information. Reporting live in Clifton, Emily Wood, WLWT. News 5. All right, Emily, thank you. Well, say goodbye to the mild weather we're seeing after the rain today. Temperatures are about to drop the second half of the week. And meteorologist Jennifer Shack is in for Kevin Robinson tonight with a preview of the changes ahead. Hi, Jen. Yeah, it has been a mild start to the week. Temperatures have been in the 50s now for about 48 hours, and we're going to see a big change starting this evening as our temperatures start to drop. Here's our city cam shot. The heaviest rain has moved through downtown, but it is still cloudy, dreary, reduced visibility, and some scattered showers out there, and we'll persist with that through our evening. Note the heavy band that rolled through about 4 o'clock downtown Cincinnati or 4.30 just after 5 
5 o'clock, our eastern county is moving very quickly off to the east. It does persist up across portions of Clinton County, but on the back side of it, we are starting to quiet down just a little bit. So steady showers worn in Clinton County down through Highland County as well. We do have lightning detection turned on, have not seen any this afternoon, but a brief band of heavy rain that rolled through between Lebanon and Wilmington right now, the lighter yellow shade indicating some moderate intensity rainfall within the 275 loop. It's those spotty showers that will persist for the rest of our evening forecast. Not expecting another wave of heavy rain, but we will have the cloud cover and showers through our evening as temperatures start to drop into the 40s and give it a couple of hours. We'll be into the 30s later on tonight. The first chance for a couple of wet snowflakes in our overnight forecast and some accumulating snow expected in a couple of days. We'll talk about wind coming up. Sheree. Jennifer, thanks so much. New on WLWT tonight, Middletown's fire chief will get a five day suspension without pay after police video showed him getting arrested, suspected of OVI. Ohio State troopers pulled over Chief Paul Lolly on December 16th. The law director says that Lolly is already back on the job and will serve a suspension at a later date. Lolly will face termination, though, if he has another alcohol related offense in the next two years. A Kenton County father accused of shaking his own six week old baby faced a judge today as detectives spelled out exactly how he hurt the baby. WLWT News 5's Tammy Mutasa has been following this case since that father was arrested. Tammy. Sure, detectives laid out the case against Christopher Harris, saying he told them he blacked out and shook his baby, but investigators revealed there was a history of abuse towards the baby. Christopher Harris listened quietly in court as investigators told a judge how he admitted he shook his own six week old baby girl and showed investigators how he did it. He admitted that he had shook the baby during the blackout and I gave him a, a roll of paper towels and he showed me how he shook the baby. Police say Harris had been taking care of the child December 23rd while the baby's mom was working. Detectives say when the mom came back, she asked Harris how the baby was. He told her she was sleeping. But when the baby started crying, her mom found her injured. Where she immediately noticed that the baby had petechia all over uh, her head and her face and that her eyes were swollen. Detectives were called to Children's Hospital since the baby had signs of shaken baby syndrome. The baby had suffered a brain hemorrhage, broken leg and fractured rib. Detectives say there were signs of abuse before this incident. Our thoughts and prayers go out to this young child and the, the entire family. Uh, Any time that uh, there's a young child and these type of allegations involved, it's very difficult for everyone. Harris's defense attorney says even though Harris made the admission to detectives, it's too soon to say who really injured the child. We're, we're concerned with our clients' mental health. But he says the silver lining is the baby is now out of the hospital. Yeah, it's a tremendous blessing that she uh, she is going to uh, going to hopefully make a full recovery and didn't pass away. Now I spoke with the baby's mom. She didn't want to be on camera, but she says she just wants her baby to be protected and safe. Tammy Mutasa, WLWT News 5. A grand jury will now decide if Harris will be indicted on felony assault. A crash near the Red Bank Road exit this afternoon ended with two people being arrested. Police responded to the northbound lane shortly after about 2.30 today for a person hit by a car. Now they say a driver clipped a man who was changing a tire at the time. Police say his injuries luckily are not serious. They arrested the driver as well as a friend helping with the tire who apparently had outstanding warrants. New tonight on WLWT, one of the victims in a local crime spree says police found his stolen car. Now we first told you about two suspects who targeted the Heritage Hills neighborhood in Sharonville on Friday. Police say they drove away with Gio, uh, Greg, Gregorio de Leon's car. Police say the thieves abandoned the car in Springdale last night. The suspects are still on the run right now. If you recognize them from that footage we just showed you, call police. Boy, a major commitment for UC football today, one that Bearcat fans hope may signal a new era for the football program. So one of the area's top football players is now opting to stay here at home. WLWT News Science George Vogel is live for us tonight in our newsroom with the first major recruiting win for new head coach Luke Fickle. Yeah. Hi, George. Hey there, Cherie. Yeah, his first uh, full day on the job and he gets a local standout and that standout is LaSalle's Jarrell White, a two-way star for the Lancers in their run of three straight state titles. 
White is widely considered a three-star recruit who played running back along with multiple defensive positions. For UC fans, White's the type of player who didn't end up committing, or at least signing, under former football coach Tommy Tuberville. Jarrell spoke openly today about how his decision was directly tied to new coach Luke Fickle, who's making the transition from longtime Ohio State assistant to heading his own program here at UC. It changed a lot, you know. I never considered staying home at all, but, you know, when I thought about it, long nights and then just over this whole winter time, you know, him reaching out and Coach Freeman reaching out, it felt comfortable with me. White picked UC over Big Ten uh, programs, including Purdue. He also had a scholarship offer from the University of Kentucky. Reporting from the newsroom, George Vogel, WLWT News 5. George, love to hear that. Glad he's staying here at home. A new effort is now underway to support foster children in the Cincinnati area. WLWT News 5's Natalie Clark shows us how a shoe drive will make a difference in our community. It's called Sweet Souls for Love. These kids are coming in um, with nothing, so they, they need shoes. They need uh, to have their feet covered. It's a shoe drive, yes. an effort to give back to the ones who need it the most, foster children in greater Cincinnati. The kids don't have them, and so we thought, okay, uh, that's an, an item that people can easily pick up. Right now, there's some great sales going on, and um, we, we need all sizes from infant through adult sizes for these children. So from now until February 14th, you can stop in at any Sibsy Klein to drop off your donation. Here at Sibsy Klein's Kenwood location, employees are giving $600 to the cause. We're really excited to go out and buy tennis shoes and all kinds of things that will help the um, children in our foster care system who are so deserving and needing of our help and assistance. For three years now, the real estate agency has partnered with Philippi Whitney Communications for donation drives for foster kids. Two years ago, it was Cases for Love, a suitcase drive that got more than 10,000 donations. Last year, more than 5,000 hats, gloves and scarves were collected during Gloves for Love. I think people in our region are very generous. I think we live in a region where people care about people and um, just seeing from past years the amount of love and care with all these items that have been donated. This year the goal is to collect 500 pairs of shoes and organizers say they are confident people in Cincinnati will make it happen because that's just who they are. Natalie Clark, WLWT News 5.